This is Warhammer like you've never seen it before. Welcome to Dawn of War Warhammer. Since 2004, this little Imperial Guardsman has always dreamt one hobby dream, to bring Dawn of War to the tabletop. I want a game of Warhammer exactly like the greatest Warhammer video game of all time. I'm talking base building. Mustering an army. Marine squad deployed. Upgrades. Light of the Emperor! Map control, exploration, Captured. and above all, a fully functional Dawn of War economy built right on top of Warhammer 40k. Today we've got our fourth installment of Dawn of War Warhammer, and we have a ripper of a battle on my famous Zorpazorp 60 square foot Ultramar Cathedral, and with two brand new factions facing off, we finally see the forces of chaos take on the Primaris Space Marines. This rule set is an overlay, which means you can use it with whatever wargaming system you like, but with Warhammer 40k 10th edition hot off the press, it's time for some 40k action. Today I'll be controlling my precious heresy era work bearers who will be representing our glorious 40k chaos faction in Dawn of War Warhammer and my good mate Sam has painted up a stunning Ultramar Primaris force for some classic red versus blue action. The Ultramarines begin in the southeast corner while the word bearers borrowing their buildings from my blood ravens who let's face it aren't really loyalists to begin with deploy diagonally opposite in the northwest. Between them lies a war-torn cityscape dominated by the Guild Hall, a massive ruined cathedral that both sides must claim for victory. The first four turns of the game will be played beneath a fog of war with each player unaware of the enemy's movements. The map contains six strategic points and two critical locations, vital secondary objectives for generating resources to boost economic growth and to open up additional build zones. My word bearers began by making a cultist squad at the desecrated stronghold As you command Who surged off to the closest strategic point, nailing a massive six inch advance and landed right in position to begin capturing We shall capture it Each of these points will score a massive 100 requisition per turn, but it does take a full turn to capture Great one, thank you Thank you, Master. The Chaos Temple with 300 requisition as close to the warfront as possible finished my turn one. We captured it for chaos. The cultists captured SP1 and then added two new squad members for a measly 50 requisition and then plowed on towards the northern critical location with another massive advance roll. <laughs> it is ours for the taking. At the stronghold, I built a second cultist squad because they're just so damn cheap who also nailed a solid advance to land right on the western strategic point. I am smashing my board control early in this game. We shall capture it. To level up my horde, some power armor joins the fight. For the dark gods. When do we attack? With the first Chaos Space Marine Squad Alpha deploying from the Chaos Temple and surging forwards towards the cathedral entrance. My advances have just been insane. I'm already threatening the central scoring zone. <laughs> Yes. I built a power generator to begin boosting my power economy and then turn three kicked off. The ability to surge low cost units is a big advantage for the Chaos Faction and it is paying off here for my word bearers. Turn three begins with my second cultist squad securing SP2 for another bonus 100 requisition and a big boost to my passive requisition rate before they advance to support the Marine Squad Alpha. And here I made a big call and comment down below if you guys think I made the right choice here. Instead of rushing the central objective and grabbing some early victory points this turn, I added a new Marine to Alpha Squad and advanced south toward the third strategic point. I'm hoping that Sam won't expect this, which will mean that I'll be able to grab another strategic point and maybe even threaten both critical locations. Short-term victory points sacrificed for a mid-game economic advantage. Chaos is strong! The Northern Cultists reinforced with two members and a grenade launcher and surged onto the northern critical location as my pincer maneuver continued to envelop the central objective. We Back at base, I built a Chaos Armory to give me some choice upgrades in future turns, and at the Chaos Temple, Marine Squad Bravo deployed and rushed the center. For the glory of Chaos! Turn four, the final turn for me, under the fog, and it's time to go hard into my gambit. Alpha Squad moved on to SP3 in the south before adding an aspiring champion. Feel our wrath! They will know pain! 
and in the center, Bravo reinforced and upgraded an aspiring champion and surged into the temple, but my first poor advance roll of the game came when I needed it most, and only three of my five legionaries made it into the scoring zone. I may come to regret that roll. At the armory, I researched Purge the Weak, giving my aspiring champions three wounds and access to the fear ability, which is going to strengthen my front line, but knowing that they need more support, I advanced both cultist squads who reinforced with troopers and special weapons, the northern rabble securing the first critical location which nets a whopping 200 bonus requisition and a huge boost to our passive growth rate each turn. <laughs> Sister Roy. Knowing I desperately needed a strong showing on the scoreboard, I deployed a squad of Chaos Raptors using my gorgeous Heresy Era Ashen Circle models. These lads zoomed up into the sky and landed in the upper levels of the Guild Hall. But sadly, as they only have an objective control characteristic of one, they will score me four points, while the Legionaries at OC2 took my final VPs at the end of the Fog of War phase to ten. A slow start for the word bearers, but our time is coming. So that is the end of the word bearers first four turns under the fog of war. It's time to go and find out what those sneaky ultramarines have been up to. I ripped all of my models off the board and then Sam got to work marshalling his sons of Gilliman, opening his account with a squad of intercessors from the stronghold. We stand ready, awaiting orders. Now remember this is a whole new faction of space marines to my blood ravens I've used in earlier games. This is the primaris faction. So expect to see a whole bunch of different Space Marine units in Sam's army. After another strong advance, Sam began scoring strategic point four in the south and then smashed down his own chapel barracks in a mirror position to my own Chaos Temple and then began turn two by securing SP4. Take and hold. Reinforcing Intercessor Squad Delta and pushing to the south critical location. Moving out. Stay vigilant, brothers. Orders received, brother. Fear our wrath. A second squad of intercessors, Epsilon, surged onto SP5. Consolidating position on the objective. Claim it in the name of the Emperor. And then at the chapel barracks, Sam deployed a squad of jump assault intercessors who zoomed up into the outer balcony of the cathedral. Activating jump back to the skies. I might have him beat on model count this early, but the amount of power armor he can deploy quickly is terrifying. Initializing build protocol. A power generator kickstarted the Ultramar power economy, and requisition surged ahead too with a capture bonus from SP5 as Epsilon surged northwards in the third turn. Onward to glory! Cleanse, purge, kill! Delta did a double reinforce with a line marine and their sergeant and smashed forwards to the southern critical location. For the Emperor! Objective acquired. Strategic point identified. Take and hold. Back at base, Sam built his own armory. This base might be a mirror, but the armies are going to be very different as a third new marine unit, the foot slogging intercessors deployed from the chapel barracks and ran to the eastern door of the cathedral. Trying not to laugh with surprise, I saw Sam execute an amazing bluff with his jump troops and basically mirrored my exact tactics, foregoing the early turn three VPs to zoom on over to his third strategic point. Securing objective. Just nailing the maneuver with a five inch advance roll. I certainly did not see that coming. Objective acquired. Turn four for the Ultras, and this is going to hurt. First, he captured SP6, a full turn ahead of my third strategic point, and then to add insult to injury, reinforced that squad with a sergeant and zoomed the jumpies up into the guild hall to score five VPs in his end phase. For the Emperor! The foot slogging assault intercessors reinforced their sergeant and sprinted through the doorway, getting the full squad in the scoring zone. And with an objective control characteristic of two, this unit racks up another 10 VPs in the end phase. Epsilon headed northwards to defend SP6 and Delta Squad moved up and began to secure the critical location and Sam then upgraded his population cap to be ready to deploy more troops next turn and banked the last of his points for a fierce turn 5. I think Sam's just got his nose in front here. He managed to take a 15 to 10 lead on victory points while securing three of his strategic points to my two, but I am one turn ahead on the critical location economy, and now it's time to let the bloodshed begin. For the Dark Gods!
If you're enjoying the Dawn of War Warhammer action and you'd like to give it a go yourself, you can get the rule set from down in the description from my Patreon. It's a great way to support the project. The rules are there for Chaos, both Marine factions, Guard, Tau, Eldar, and many more on the way. And it's just a wonderful way to get behind the project so you can have even more Dawn of War Warhammer. So the Word Bearers and the Ultramarines have both had their turns behind the fog of war. Battle is commencing and we're about to do the big reveal for Sam. Sam, get in here. Come and see what we have got. Have a little look-see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right on top of each other. I think it should be pretty spicy, pretty quick. Are you worried? Uh, not against the cultists, no. The cultists, <laughs> cultists will be fine, but I think this Royal Rumble in the middle, this could go either way, I think, but we'll, uh, we'll find out in a few more turns once we get a few more guys in there. It is time to see who gets the first turn. Highest will choose. Oh, come on, word bearers. Strong? Yes! Oh. Alright, I'm definitely taking it because I do not want to get charged by all of the jump intercessors and the normies. The word bearers are going to take the guild hall. This honor will be ours! I must leverage my economic advantage here, and that means hitting Sam where it hurts. To that end, after capturing SP3, Alpha Squad surged forwards and prepared to attack Delta to interrupt their capture in any way that they can. I purchased another juicy chaos upgrade here, this time the Mark of Corn, which makes my Dark Pact rules super lethal in the fight phase, as we'll see later on, hopefully. I upgraded my aspiring champions to have power swords from the armory. And then Bravo made a normal move into the scoring footprint of the Guildhall and purchased the Mark of Zinch to buff their shooting attack. And with the Legionaries OC2, that will be 12 VPs in the end phase for me this turn. The Northern Cultists advanced four inches and I almost threw them onto SP6 to keep hitting Sam's economy, but with 12 Cultists in the squad after reinforcing, I decided to just cash 12 easy VPs in the end phase. Let's face it, these guys are not going to be alive for long. Let's score with them while I can. Oh, he's strong. The Raptors jumped down to the center and reinforced, eyeing off the Assault Intercessors in the doorway. We can taste their blood already. You are already dead. My second squad of cultists ran up to try and score some points, but Bravo Squad had foolishly sat in the doorway, and now my score line is going to pay. Damnation! I constructed a very unpainted sacrificial circle to begin amassing support from the denizens of the warp next turn, and then it was time for the blood to flow. So my legionaries in the cathedral are going to open fire on the assault intercessors, and I'm activating a dark pact, so I am getting auto wounds on lethal hits of a five. So threes to hit, fives to auto wounds. Terrible! Terrible! I have got two auto wounds, and then I've got two normal wounds, and these re-roll because I'm inside the objective marker. Fail to wound, and the re-roll, and they fail as well. That is awful. I was looking for two three-plus saves to uh, try saves these assault intercessors. Ah, and that'll do it. That was trash. <laughs> Thanks, Lucky. While Zinch was in like a conference call or something and kind of unable to attend during my shooting phase, my word bearers decided to throw their lot in with Corn for the fight phase and executed two savage charges. The Raptors pounced on the assault intercessors. My aspiring champion sliced one wound off an ultramarine with his accursed weapon, and then his brothers threw 16 attacks with their chainsaws, landing 10 hits, five automatically wounding with lethal hits increased to five plus from their mark of Corn, buffing their dark pact, and Sam failing four saves that sees two intercessors just eviscerated. Alpha Squad also declared a dark pact <laughs> and then charged headlong into Delta Squad, desperate to rush them right off the critical location. So I've got my accursed weapon from my sergeant and I've got my lethal pact active as well. So chasing those lethal hit fives. Threes to hit. What is going on? <laughs> Far out. Okay, one does automatically punch through, and then I've got 80, 18 dice, again chasing lethal hit fives and hitting on threes. Oh, now that is better. Seven auto wounds and fours to wound on the rest, and these are re-rollable, because again, we're charging an enemy unit on an objective. I'm gonna need those re-rolls. <laughs> So many saves for you, Sam. Hopefully some dead marines this time. If you're enjoying Dawn of War Warhammer and you'd like to see more of it, click that little subscribe button and a like as well would be great. So helpful for a channel that's just this small. We've got like less than 10k at the moment. We need to pump those rookie numbers up. Nice.
Six failed saves saw three intercessors wilt beneath my savage combat blades, but busy capturing the critical location, Delta can't strike back this turn. But in the guild hall, the assault intercessors had recovered from the shock of my charge and countered, landing four wounds, but the traitor armor held strong, and with all three of my units who made dark packs passing their leadership tests and thus not taking any mortal wounds, my first bargain with the dark gods has paid off, and I scored a whopping 31 victory points to zoom my total to 41 to Sam's 15. For the glory of chaos! After surviving my charge and claiming the southern critical location for a much needed requisition boost for Sam's ultramarines, Weapons at ready. Delta Squad performed a fallback move out of combat to not only land in the scoring zone this turn, but to valiantly hold the door against my chaos forces. For the Emperor! The assault intercessors reinforced and prepared for a fight, and the jumpies jumped on in and revved their chain blades. None shall stop us. Epsilon moved up in support and reinforced, responding to the clash of battle from the eastern doorway. At your command, fear denies faith. And then Sam built the machine cult on the southeast corner of the guild hall, preparing to respond to any possible demonic incursion with some ultramar armored might. Deep striking. Then in a pulse of light and a sharp bang of teleportation flare, four First Company veterans popped into existence in the center of the guild hall and leveled their storm bolters point blank at my legionaries. I think their days might be numbered. A quick power sword upgrade for all of Sam's sergeants at the armory and then the stage was set for a vicious retaliation. None shall survive. Cease and repent. The jumpies pulped four cultists with mass reactive rounds from their bolt pistols and then braced to charge. Eat bolt gun! Please send us support! We shall cleanse. The Terminators unloaded with their storm bolters, 16 shots, 10 hits, but only three wounds, which I saved as dark energies of the warp swirled around my twisted paragons of darkness. <laughs> I've uh, deep striked in with the Terminators. Uh, we tried to shoot a few of those Legionaries, had no luck with that. Um, so I think we're just going to uh, get in there and just start pounding. Yeah, easy. It was a pretty easy charge, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get him in there. For the Emperor! So I've got my four Terminators with their Power Fist. That's going to give me 12 attacks. Uh, so hopefully we can knock a few of these Legionnaires out. Four. Four, that's trash! <laughs> Luckily you only need two to wound, dude, so flatten me. Uh, three wounds. I was pretty worried about that, but this is doable. My save is reduced to five though, because the power fits are AP minus two, but with damage to every failed save is a dead legionary. Come on, fives. Oh! <laughs> yeah, okay, three dead marines, but I'm still there. Die, scum! They are too strong! Reeling from the Terminator's stumble, the jumpies gunned into the cultists and showed the veterans how it's done with 20 attacks from their Astartes chainsaws, landing 12 hits and then 12 wounds, wiping my whole unit in a spray of bloody gore and viscera. Regrouping, ever vigilant. They will not escape us! By the eastern door, my raptors got to strike first again and massed 20 attacks, landing 15 hits but only 8 wounds. But with 5 ones, Sam lost every single marine but his wounded sergeant who valiantly kept up his guard and parried with 4 attacks himself, landing a single wound on one of the traitors encircling him. No prisoners! For the glory of the Imperium. My legionaries in the opposite doorway clapped back at the Terminators, but the company veterans' armor held strong and they only took a single wound. They do not have a prayer. With four squads now inside the scoring footprint, Sam managed 19 victory points to close the gap on my early lead, bringing the scoreline to 34-41 to the word bearers. But he will be unhappy with his damage output this turn, and my response is going to hurt. Now, our Dawn of War rules require a lot of units to be able to change their loadouts during the course of the game. Sergeants can upgrade their chainswords to power swords and even power fists, their bolt pistols to plasma, marines get new heavy and special weapons, Light of the Emperor! 
and even vehicles have complex loadout options like the Space Marine Predator, which can swap out its auto cannon and heavy bolters for mighty LAS cannons. Now, I didn't want to have to buy triples of everything to do all of those loadouts, so we got some help from today's sponsor, the almighty Magnet Baron, the official sponsor of the Dawn of War Warhammer campaign, because magnets, they just solve everything. If you need magnets for your wargaming, then look no further than the MagnetBaron.com, your DIY super magnet home. MagnetBaron.com have a huge range of wargaming magnets which are super powerful and even have specific kits for notoriously difficult to magnetize models, magnetize movement trays, and magnetize collapsible flight stands for the epic travel wargaming experience. I challenge you to find a better feeling in all of wargaming than the pure bliss of this moment. Magnetic Perfection so to score some boss wargaming magnets for all your army needs, hit up the magnetbaron.com, link down in the description, and a big shout out to Constantine who runs the Magna Baron. He's an absolute legend. It's not often you'll find a sponsor willing to support content on a brand new channel, so go and show him some love. As you command, we are legion. Alpha gave into the whisperings or maybe the screamings of Korn. They were soon joined by a unit of possessed marines represented by the heresy era Gel Vorback models, possibly my favorite sculpts in all of 30k and 40k. Do you hear the voices too? My legionaries reinforced. At your command. And then to further garner Korn's favor, I purchased a squad of Korn Berserkers, here represented by the stunning 30k World Eaters painted by Dom Santilli. I've just got to get this full army in a bat rep soon. The Zerks just fell short of getting into a scoring position and screamed rage-filled nonsense and then cut the advanced dice up into pieces whilst I was busy moving other models. To soften up the pathetic loyalists, Alpha Squad opened fire point blank with 15 bolter shots, but their rage-addled brain only landed six hits and one wound, which the valiant son of Ultramar caught safely on his pauldron. Taking hits! Utterly enraged, the legionaries and possessed howled with another dark pact of corn. Death to the enemy! and then both charged into combat. I, I just feel genuinely bad for these poor intercessors. Destroy! Destroy! <laughs> This is a huge moment for the word bearers. It's our sixth turn. We've lost some control of the cathedral, but my possessed are here with my big squad of legionaries, and we're gonna smash through this, this double door that your last little squad of intercessors on this side is holding, Sam. And I've charged, they're both charges off. Let's go smash. Up first is the legionaries. I've got 21 dice just from my close combat weapons. Hitting on threes, and fours to wound. Seven wounds and re-rolling all failed because once again, those intercessors are on the objective. Wow, that, that only got me an extra one. <laughs> okay, so eight wounds to start off with for you, Sammy. Stop f***ing around on company time. Yeah. Now, uh... <laughs> eight armor saved, three plus against this uh, nasty chaos incursion. Two failed, the rest passed. One casualty, happy with that. Up next is my power fist from the legionaries, hitting on threes. And yes, wounding on twos. And oh, come on. Okay, so two more saves and they are much harder. Looking for fives. Ooh, far both of them. So with damage two, that's another two gone. Taking damage. Ah! 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 <laughs> Fall back. Three of these damn intercessors left alive, but that is okay, because it's time for the possessed to shine. They're my favorite word bearer models, the Heresy Gel Vorback, and they are going to eat these space marines. Now, I've made a dark pact again. Uh, I'm going for lethal hits, so any uh, natural sixes on hits will auto wound, and because of the beautiful possessed special rule, when I make a dark pact, all of my wounds get the devastating wound special rule. Absolutely savage. 16 attacks hitting on three. Threes. So four of those are automatically wounding, and then another seven hits at strength five, I'm wounding on threes as well, and sixes are unsavable. <laughs> hell. Okay, so two unsavable wounds and another eight saves at AP minus two. Every wound is damage two. 
There's no way they could survive this. Wet and warm, Astartes' blood dripping from their knives and mutations alike, the legionaries and possessed consolidated inside the scoring zone in a huge swing for the word bearers, racking up 20 victory points in the end phase just from these two squads. The boys in blue are in big trouble here. Light of the Emperor! My last cultist charged valiantly into the Terminators, more to kind of hold them up than anything else, and unsurprisingly, they didn't even scratch the vaunted Terminator plate, but this time, the Terminators shook off the dislocation fog and their power fists roared. With 12 attacks all landing hits, help with a little bit by the Oath of Moment rerolls, and then at strength 8, every single damage to attack wounded. My legionaries failed five saves and the pulped remains of Bravo squad spattered across the faces of my cultist zealots who watched on in abject horror. And in an absolutely savage turn worthy of corn, yielding yet another bumper 27 victory points, takes the mid-turn tally to 68 to 34. The line troops just aren't cutting it for Sam, so he put a bold plan in action to turn this game around. First, some outriders zoomed off the machine cult and took advantage of their special ability to capture points even though they are vehicles, not usually possible in Dawn of War Warhammer. A second chapel barracks to prepare for a late rush next turn up in the north in SP6's build zone, and then a squad of new stern guard veterans leapt up into the upper ruins, ready to lay down some fierce anti-infantry cover covering fire for Sam's counterattack. Engaging the enemy. Epsilon just desperate for vengeance after Delta's evisceration and the assault intercessor's disembowelment reinforced and smashed through the eastern doorway. We will crush the enemies of the Imperium. Then the jumpies, le and I'm going to be calling them jumpies for the rest of the bat rep, so just get used to that. They leapt into the fray to hold up the southern incursion. Oh boy, this is about to get so bloody. Very bloody. But that's okay. Korn loves it that way. None shall stop us. Epsilon opened and fire with their bolters, landing 11 hits and 7 wounds, and with two failed saves, the first raptor was finally pulped and slumped to the guild hall floor. For the Emperor! Camping the objective, the Outriders pumped Bolter Fire into the back of the Legionaries who were the target of the Ultramarine Oath of Moment this turn, meaning that any unit can reroll fail hits against them, but only one wound wasn't enough to pierce their armor. The Assault Intercessors turned their bolt pistols onto the Raptors, chipping a single wound and finishing off the injured traitor. Meeting resistance! We are taking fire! Ah! Okay, so I've got my uh, Stern Guard veterans, uh, hopefully going to put a bit of punishment uh, on these uh, Chaos. So I've got four shots, uh, but I've actually got rapid fire, so it's actually gonna go to eight. So I'm just looking for three pluses here. I do have Oath of Moment, so I actually get to reroll these two. Got seven shots in total. So I need fours here. Um, now I've actually got anti-infantry four plus, so that'll actually make it devastating wounds. Four unsavable wounds pulped two legionaries, and then Sam's charges began. First, Epsilon launched through the eastern doorway, and then the jumpies launched into the legionaries, ignoring the possessed for now. For the Emperor, charge! Engaging the enemy. With the Oath of Moment in full swing, the Jumpies landed 19 of their 20 hits and 9 wounds, but Korn's laughter roared around the Guild Hall as only two legionaries fell to the ground. The gods favor us! Epsilon then slipped all over the pulped corpses of their brothers and rolled a monstrous 10 ones on 25 attacks to land 13 hits and then 7 wounds, and they couldn't even kill a single raptor with just one failed save. That is a devastating blow for Ultramar. The cultists bounced off the Terminators who then squished seven of the traitor scum but couldn't break free and then Chaos struck back with the first legionaries landing eight hits and seven wounds with the help of another Dark Pact with Corn to access those five plus lethal hits with the Mark of Corn, which killed two jumpies and wounded a third. And then the Raptors revved their chainswords, but didn't make a patch to play it safe. At some point, I'm gonna take some mortal wounds. And they managed eight hits with four wounds, but the boys in blue saved all of them to stay alive with some critical VPs in the end phase. In spite of some pretty horrid rolling, Sam actually won the turn by a single VP, adding 28 to his tally, taking the score to 68 to 62. But with my possessed unchecked and more pain no doubt on the way, Korn isn't worried yet. 
I reinforced a bunch of squads and then the Corn Berserkers moved into the Guild Hall, not advancing so they can attempt a, a kind of longish charge later in the turn. Kill! Kill! The unengaged Possessed moved in to flank the Jumpies, and then a second squad of the Fierce Mutants deployed from the Sacrificial Circle and pushed up to threaten the Bikers and again interrupt Sam's capture of the Southern Critical Location. Them limb from limb. At the Sacrificial Circle, I researched the Demon Prince upgrade, which takes a full turn to resolve. Oh boy, I hope I can get that one off. I then deployed a Chaos Lord from the Chapel Barracks. I am here to lead you. And advanced him towards the combat as fast as I can, and anyone who's played the video games should know exactly what I'm trying to do right now. Both my possessed squads charged, but my berserkers just fell short with the nails driving them to swing at some imagined foes up there in the northwestern corner. Why aren't we killing yet? This is the last time! Another dark pack saw the new unit of possessed kill one outrider outright with lethal hit sixes. Kill! Crush! <laughs> and the second Outrider saved three or four wounds to finish on two wounds from the damage to Claws of the Traitors, and the Possessed passed their leadership test to avoid mortal wound damage from Corn yet again. We will strip the flesh from their bones. This is a big fight. I've split my Possessed off in different directions, and I've got two on each of Sam's squads. We're gonna start into the Assault Jump Intercessors, just two Possessed coming in, needing threes to hit. Uh, I have made a dark pact here, uh, so sixes are automatically wounding, but I've missed with quite a few of the rest. And now I've got devastating wounds, so any critical wounds are unsavable, and I need threes to wound. Oh, jeez, that's not great, that's not great. Uh, needing four ups. Oh, none of them are good. Oh man, did I get all of them? You did, unfortunately, <laughs> yes. So my attacks are all damaged too, Sammy, so get them all out of there. <laughs> My other two possessed into Sam's intercessors, and these guys are worth double objective control, so we need to mince a few here. Threes to hit. Helps if I roll them all. One automatic wound from my Dark Pact, and then a whole bunch of successful hits. Threes to wound, and sixes are devastating. Oh, one unsavable, and a bunch more wounds. So now I've got five armor saves, needing four ups. I'll rip another two out of there. Okay, could have been worse, could have been worse. Yes! In response, Epsilon landed 13 hits and seven wounds, and my Raptors lost another member failing a single save. None shall stop us. Then they slashed back, landing seven hits and four wounds, and the AP-1 of the Chainswords saw two wounds unsaved on fours, and another Ultramarine fall. Taking hits! The Terminators finally obliterated the cultists and consolidated back to the center to prepare for a big counterattack. and after some losses inside the guild hall, I could only bank 22 VPs this turn, taking the mid-turn score to 90 to 62, but boy did I dish some pain. Surely, Sam can't come back from that much carnage. With Ultramar on the brink, the Stern Guard veterans surge forwards onto the upper level, ready to coordinate their counter-attack with their first company brothers. Then Sam deployed a new intercessor squad, Gamma, and they launched up into the ruins to support their veterans. Moving out. Stay vigilant, brothers. Engaging the enemy. For even more firepower, a Ballistus Dreadnought lumbered off the Machine Cult and smashed through the ruins into an elevated firing position. Even in death I still serve. I am the instrument of his will. With still more resources to burn, Sam bought a jump captain and zoomed him forwards. I command in the name of the Emperor. My faith is my shield. And then another intercessor squad, Amiga, and they snuck into the northeast corner just inside the scoring footprint and leveled their bolters at the many foes before them. For the Emperor! The Primaris taking a bit of a beating in the center here, so I've gone for a slightly different tactic. I'm gonna go for more of a shooting approach this turn. Combat's not working for me, so I'm gonna go for an overwhelming firepower, hopefully mop up the rest of these uh, traders. Sam once again selected my Legionaries for his Oath of Moment targets, which you'll remember allows him to reroll failed hits only in Dawn of War Warhammer, and then Amiga opened fire across the guild hall on my Corn Berserkers, landing five hits, but only one wound, which I failed. <laughs> Then Gamma zeroed in on the legionaries and peppered them with more bolter fire. Eight shots hitting without the damn reroll, three wounds which luckily I did save. 
The power of chaos gives us strength! Then the stern guards showed their younger brothers how it's done, firing their combi weapons down into the legionaries. Eight shots, this time needing the Oath of Moment rerolls to land all eight hits, landing four wounds and pulping two more legionaries instantly. <laughs> The Terminators followed suit with the Storm Bolters, landing a whopping 18 hits with the Oath of Moment rerolls and 11 wounds, which is just absolutely battering my Legionaries, reducing them to just the single aspiring champion who screamed an invocation to Korn in defiance, but it couldn't save him from the Ballistus Dreadnought, who landed two wounds with his Lance Cannons and excoriated him to ash and dust. Is that double ones? Yeah. Nice! Ah! Burn, heretic. Not content with just the legionaries, the venerable ancient fired his missile pods across into the corn berserkers, landing four wounds and killing two of the maniacs, although it didn't quite go as Ultramar intended. Blood! <laughs> Blood! Break their backs! Sam's taken my bait here. He thinks that it's great. He's killed some corn berserkers. He's happy with that. But let me tell you, it is time for a blood surge. Because I've upgraded these guys, I can now make a D6 movement when they get targeted by a shooting attack and I lose a unit, which I did, I lost two. And now I've got an extra three inches and my charge is that much easier next turn. And now Sam has to choose, does he charge them with his Terminators or does he go for my Possessed? Wow, a low charge, but it's just enough. Opting to save the intercessors from the possessed, the Terminators lumbered forwards and swung their power fists. 17 attacks, seven hits, and five wounds. Not the greatest return, but I failed all of my saves, and at three wounds apiece, the damage to power fists smushed two of my mutated renegades. My possessed made another dark pact and scored three lethal hit sixes and five total wounds at AP1, killing two more battle brothers. The enemy is attacking! The intercessors countered, landing an unsaved wound on an injured possess, which killed one more of the foul traitors. Before my enduring raptors threw out 11 attacks, landing 9 wounds, and more horrific saving. Oh wow, you got savage. Sam lost the last intercessor and an injured terminator. Taking fire! My second squad of Possess minced the Outrider to neutralize the southern critical location and yet again after another bloody turn with one left to play for both sides Sam racked up just a monster 28 VPs from all his troops swarming the guild hall to draw the score level at 90 victory points apiece. With one turn left, it's time to make my final gambit. First, I need to impact Sam's scoreline as much as possible, so I reinforced my corn berserkers and charged them towards Omega Squad. My newer possessed squad reinforced and surged into the guild hall's footprint, ready to just eviscerate anything nearby in blue power armor. And with plenty of space in my population cap, I purchased a third squad of possessed and rolled a monstrous six inch advance to send them climbing over the low ruined walls and into the southern scoring zone of the guild hall. We have it now! The location will be ours! A second squad of raptors deployed from the Chaos Temple and took to the skies, soaring to the upper levels of the guild hall. They don't score as highly as line troops, but thankfully they're very speedy. It is easily done. Then my Chaos Lord burst through the western doorway and howled to the almighty blood god. Sprouting limbs turn black and scaly. Zir's new head buds and unfolds, slowly turning up from a bowed stance. Horns sprout from the cranium, the huge upright horns of some ancient Aegean bull demon. Samus. That's the only name you will hear. Samus. It means the end and the death. Samus. I am Samus. Samus is all around you. Samus is the man beside you. Samus will gnaw on your bones. Look out! Samus is here! That little sequence was of course from our Mark of Kelf Horus Heresy campaign when Samus arrived, but I couldn't resist reusing it, it's so cool. Uh, and the Chaos Lord has of course now enabled his Demon Prince ability that we researched at the Sacrificial Circle last turn, and he is ready to feast on some Loyalist flesh. I am the end of days. The Berserkers nailed their charge and encircled Amiga Squad. Attack! <laughs> 
Ruins. My second squad of Possessed launched a mega charge up the ruins to land in combat with the Stern Guard. Destroy! Destroy! And Samus thundered forwards into the first company veterans of the Ultramarines. Let's see if that fancy Terminator plate can withstand the avatar of the Blood God. The Possessed swung their rusted blades and claws, landing 10 hits from 12 attacks and slicing 8 wounds. And with 4 failed saves, that's the entire Stern Guard squad eviscerated. So the Corn Berserkers are ready to annihilate these inter- I, I nearly called them interstellars. What are they called? Intercessors. <laughs> Intercess- Crush these- I can't get it. Intercessors. Intercessors crush these intercessors, and I might be able to do it with just the champion. He has got the Talisman of Burning Blood, which ups his attacks to 5 plus D3, which is a big one. Okay, so he's got 6 attacks hitting on 3s, and any 6s are automatically wounding. Oh, we like that! <laughs> Now I also get 1 plus D3 strength when I make a Dark Pact with the champion. So strength 7, so I'm wounding on 3s. Oh, boom! Okay, so that is 4 fierce wounds through to Sam. <laughs> We've killed 1, now all the normal Berserkers, 4 attacks each, hitting on 3s. Again, I've got lethal hit, so that's 2, 3 auto wounding, and 3s to wound. So that's another seven saves from the Berserkers. I'm actually not going to wipe these guys out. That's wild. The Corn Berserker is a little disappointing, but the Demon Prince is here to go stomp. I've got six attacks. I'm using my strike ability to get the extra damage. I hit on twos. Uh, I haven't rolled any ones. I have one one. I can reroll a single attack, which gets me all hits. Now I am strength eight. That's toughness five of the Terminators. It's only threes to wounds. I have wounded with all bar one. I've got my reroll of one wound. And wounding on every dice. All right, these are all damage three. I'm reducing Sam's save to four. Every failed save is a dead Terminator. Pathetic creatures, fall back. Three failed saves, three dead First Company veterans. The Dark Gods smile upon Samus today. Yes. One of the Corn Berserkers fell beneath the blades of the Intercessors and that last Terminator valiantly stood his ground and swung up into the jaws of the Great Beast of the Warp, chipping off two wounds before falling to the whirring chain blades of the Raptors behind him. I managed to add 25 VPs to my scoreline from the mix of trader units inside the Guild Hall and dealt a serious blow to the Ultramar Garrison. Sam now needs to find 26 victory points to win the game. Gamma Squad reinforced and prepared to open fire at basically everything around them. Omega reinforced and steeled their blades for one last fight. Two Outriders zoomed with a massive turbo boost all the way into the guild hall, smashing down the southern entrance in a spew of plasteel fragments. Sam deployed a new squad of Assault Intercessors and prepared to aid their brothers in Omega Squad, and the Jump Captain launched up onto the balcony, desperate to lead his forces to victory. Today the enemy shall know fear. I am a god! It's the last turn of the game for the Ultramarines. Uh, I'm going to try to consolidate some victory points to try to get it over Loki's Chaos. Um, we're not going to, going to avoid the um, combat, but I am going to try to get some revenge against this Demon Prince. Every spare bolter now pointed towards the Abomination of Chaos, more for a moral victory than anything else, with Gamma unloading a thunder of bolter fire, but the dark smoke of the warp coiled about the Champion of Corn, and the rounds passed harmlessly around him. The Outriders though, at point blank, managed to chip off a sneaky wound. Go bikers! Apollo the Demon! You think to harm me! And then the Ballistus Dreadnought poured everything into the Demon Prince, but with some seriously good saving throws, only a single Laz Cannon wound went unsaved, but with D6 plus 1 damage, the Venerable Ancient chipped off 3 more wounds off my Prince, leaving just 4! It will make your souls all the sweeter! Feel my wrath! The Assault Intercessors charged in the northeast corner, landing 9 hits and 7 wounds, managing to bring down one of the crazed berserkers of corn, and then the jump captain gunned his jump pack and, in the ultimate rule of cool suicidal charge, threw himself into Samus to avenge his fallen brothers. Five attacks with his power fist saw all of them hit with the Oath of Moment reroll, and three damage two wounds got past the flailing guard of the great demon. Three wounds, Sam. 
It's come down to it. This is not ideal. So you've got, I've got a two plus save, but these damn power fists, they're AP minus two. And I've only got four wounds left. A damage two, if I fail two of these saves, my demon prince is cooked. I'm we're hoping for. I'm confident, I'm confident. Here we go. Chasing four, fours. Two fours, two fours, two fours. Oh, look at that. Two Fist big wounds, very sixes. I live with two wounds left. I think it's time to count up the VPs, dude. I think so, it's looking like it. Let's see who claims the guild hall. The jump captain was then crushed by Samus in one fell strike, and in one last vicious combat, the berserkers smashed back at the assault intercessors, killing some vital squad members, and then it was time to see if Sam had the needed 26 points. In the northwest, he scored two assault and two normal intercessors, scoring eight victory points. The ballistas dreadnought worth four objective control takes the total to 12 VP. Gamma squad sitting atop the battered ruins adds another five Battle Brothers at 2 OC each, shooting Sam up to 22 victory points, and sitting behind enemy lines, staring down an enraged Demon Prince are the two Outriders worth 2 OC each, taking Sam to 26 VPs for the turn, meaning the final scoreline for the fourth game of Dawn of War Warhammer is 115 to the Word Bearers and 116 points to the Sons of Gilliman as the Ultramarines take home the the ultimate come from behind victory. But as the guild hall reverberated with the sounds of victory, echoes from within the warp of a battle fought on these very grounds some 10,000 years earlier boomed across the battlefield, as giants of metal and warp fire marched to war under banners of blue and red, when the ultramarines were not just a chapter, but a legion, and the word bearer's heresy had only just begun. If you enjoyed this showdown between my modern day 40k Ultramarines and the Word Bearers and you need some more Red vs Blue action, make sure you check out the first three installments of the Mark of Kelth Horus Heresy campaign, linked down in the description, which I am hopefully going to return to on this channel at some point in 2024. But in the meantime, strap in for some more Dawn of War Warhammer action. That battle report was shot in the first week of November. It is... February, and you guys are finally going to see it. Thank you so much for your patience. I've had a baby, a whole bunch of other stuff has just delayed the crap out of this bad boy, but he is here now. I hope you guys loved it. I thought it was an awesome game. Thank you so much to Sammy for coming and playing with me. I like sort of nice, interesting scenario. I love the Chaos faction. I hope you Primaris lovers are happy now as well. Chaos is so good though, so much fun. If you want to see uh, more Zorpazorp, Dawn of War, Warhammer, go and support the Patreon. You get all the uh, playtesting early access rules there as well. It means a huge amount. Thank you so much to all of my Zorp Hammertrons for your Patreon. Patience, and I cannot wait to see what is coming next for Dawn of War Warhammer. Thank you guys. See you soon.